What's up guys and welcome to a new sort of rambly video where hopefully once a week I get to talk with you guys about all the new stuff that's happening over the past week uh, with Magic the Gathering and with Wizards and with our channel and things like that. Again, it's going to be really laid back, uh, nothing too crazy, but just a fun little time for us to catch up. Uh, I do want to mention we have posted some information already that we plan uh, to work with Tyler from Burst of Knowledge. Uh, Tyler and Will and myself have been working together already on some content that hopefully you guys will get to see in the near future. But we do have bigger plans and uh, bigger aspirations that hopefully we get to bring you over the summer. Uh, specifically with the release of the core set, I believe will be the first set that we really get to, to flex our muscles a little bit and see what we can do. Um, in addition, with just It Resolves, we've been releasing deck techs over the past couple weeks. Uh, we've been cycling through formats. We started with Modern. We're into Legacy this week. And then next week, I believe the plan is to go into Popper uh, and then maybe move forward with Commander and maybe even Standard. Standard is not something I know a lot about, uh, but I do want to make sure that it's content useful for you guys. So if I need to do my research and get some decks together, I absolutely will do that. So uh, no worries there. If you do want to see a Standard deck list or indeed any other deck list, just go ahead and post it down in the comment section. Uh, and I'll actually take a look at it and then hopefully if it's a good one we can actually use it on the show uh, That way you guys can hopefully learn a bit more about it. So Lots of lots of new stuff going on with a, with the channel uh, and again with the partnership with Tyler for Bursts of Knowledge uh, Great partnership great guy. We're really looking forward to working with him uh, more and more in the future uh, He's very much a finance guy uh, very much a collector uh, which I fall into the collector category, but less the finance category. So uh, working with somebody who's sort of on the other side of the table from us is actually great, I think. Um, it brings a whole new dynamic to, to the podcast if we have him on for an, for an episode or something along those lines. Uh, it also just gives a different perspective, hopefully, that you guys can learn from. So we're really excited about it. Tyler seems really excited about it. Uh, and again, we're, we're, hope, we're hopeful that this will boost both of our channels and, and grow a bigger audience and also a better community for everybody. So that's really the plan. Um, now, this weekend is Dominaria, uh, pre-release weekend. So get excited for that. Dominaria looks really good. Uh, if you haven't looked into the set, I definitely recommend doing so. It will definitely make you want to go out and play at the pre-release. Um, there's just so many fantastic, very high level cards. Uh, the power level is great. It, to me, feels like they're finally bringing back some power level into standard that they've been lacking over the past few sets. So really excited about it. Uh, hopefully you guys are too. I would recommend before you go out to the pre-release, uh, definitely check out the set review from Limited Resources. Of course, they always do their set review of every single new set, uh, and they do a fantastic job breaking down every single card. Uh, LSV pro player knows what he's talking about. Marshall Sutcliffe on the coverage team, one of the head coverage guys knows what he is talking about as well. Uh, so definitely, definitely check that out before you go and build your deck because they will give you some tips that you probably did not think of. Uh, they're really, really fantastic. I know I'm about halfway through the set review right now, so uh, it's long, but it's worth the wait. Um, and so definitely good luck to all of you guys uh, looking to play for the pre-release. If uh, you have some fun stories about it after the fact, please share them with us by all means. Um, Comment them down below. Uh, join our Discord if you haven't already, and you can actually share your story there. Uh, we do plan to do some sort of fun streaming uh, activity stuff in the future where we can bring some of you guys on. Uh, so if that actually happens, maybe this will be one of the first things we can talk about, and you can actually share your story with on, on live stream with anybody who's actually with us. So it uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, but again, good luck to you guys. Definitely, definitely looking forward to this pre-release. Um, the next thing I wanted to mention is the banned and restricted announcement that came out uh, early this week. There was no changes, which is not very surprising, I don't think. Uh, there, uh, there were talks of a few cards, specifically Mox Opal came up, uh, at least in a lot of the, the forums that I was looking through. Um, Mox Opal enables not only Affinity, but also Lantern Control to do their thing very, very well. Uh, but I don't think that it's at the point where it needs to be banned. Um, if you look at percentages, no deck in Modern is actually reaching into that percentage range where I would actually start to worry about it. Uh, you've heard us talk about on the, the podcast before, if it, 
if it reaches a certain level as far as the percentage of the metagame that's being seen it really gets gets a red flag for us uh 20 is really really high uh, 15 percent is really where i start to worry but last i looked uh which admittedly was probably a week and a half two weeks ago uh there really wasn't anything over 10 percent. so i think we're all in in agreement that modern is is actually in a pretty healthy place right now so i'm not too worried about that um other formats there really isn't anything taking over uh so there's not too much to talk about there i'm excited because uh I don't know. I, I really like the state that Magic is in right now as far as its formats are concerned. There's a lot of really good healthy formats out there right now, which means for new players, it's a great place to jump in. Uh, for, for Standard, we're finally... I mean, yes, there are definitely some decks that are clearly at the top of the list. Um, but And again, I'm limited in my knowledge of Standard. But last I looked, which again was about a week and a half ago, there wasn't anything too taking over or too crazy. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with where that's at. Modern's in a great place. It's got tons of healthy decks, uh, tons of decks taking down top eights, which we'll talk about in just a second. Um, so really, really excited uh, to, to move forward without any bannings or restrictions, indeed, on any cards. So um, I do want to talk about this past weekend. We had two GPs. Both were modern focused. Uh, GP Hartford. Uh, was just regular modern, a uh, lot of really interesting decks, and the deck that won it was KCI Combo, uh, which if you don't know what that deck does, I would I would recommend looking into it. I'm not going to go over it right now, but it's definitely a janky deck, uh, but it's really sweet. So happy to see KCI taking down a, a modern tournament. Definitely didn't expect that one, but Amulet Titan was in there, Boggles, Burn, Affinity, again, Affinity, bringing that back up, uh, Elves, and Hollow One, which is a relatively new deck to the format. Um, Hollow One's a card from Hour of Devastation that when you cycle uh, or discard cards, it gets a little bit cheaper. And you can essentially with this deck, the goal is to just play it for free. So you cycle through and discard a bunch of cards and then you just drop Hollow Ones for no, no cost at all. It also runs a lot of graveyard interaction, things like Bloodgast uh, to bring back and Flame Wake Phoenix, which all are fantastic cards. Really, really a fun deck, but it's a high variance deck. Um, what that basically means is it can win very easily, but it can also lose very easily. So, uh, I don't think it's going to be taking over modern by any means, but that's sort of on the radar for some people. Um, for me, it's, it's just too high variance. Even when it does work, uh, there's just as many games where it doesn't. So I'm not too worried about that one, but I am excited about that deck because it's really fun looking. Uh, I have quite a lot of the pieces, and I'm missing a few, so I'm hoping to pick those up. Um, but definitely a sweet deck, and definitely a good showing for a lot of decks at GP Hartford. Uh, there was also GP Sydney, uh, which was modern, but it was Team Unified Modern. So basically teams of three, all playing modern, versus another team of three. Uh, and we saw, again, a pretty various showing as far as deck lists go. Hollow One actually was in the winning uh, bracket along with Humans and Tron. Uh, Humans is a deck that's been sort of on people's radar as well as that Hollow One deck. Humans is very good. Uh, it, it has a lot of interaction. It deals with a lot of decks really, really well. Um, and because it's mostly creature-based, you still get every effect in the world on a stick. So you can actually beat in and do really, really well. Uh, definitely a good deck. Definitely a deck that I've got my eye on. Uh, but I don't think, again, it's not taking over by any means. It's definitely beatable. Uh, so just really kind of happy to see a new deck come up. Uh, again, in that top, uh, the top bracket, we had Affinity, another Tron deck, as well as Grixis Control. Grixis doing fairly well in this one. Uh, next, we have Dredge, Humans, and Valakut. Uh, Dredge is a very sweet deck. I actually recently built a Dredge deck, so I'm excited about that. But Valakut also, uh, interesting, non-interactive, very combo all-in deck. Uh, deals a lot of damage very quickly once uh, you scape shift into everything. So really sweet. Um, didn't really expect it in in the showing for a tournament like this, just because it's you just kind of counter uh, and it works out pretty well. But it is again a sweet deck. So happy to see it. Um, and then the last three: Blue Moon, uh, Humans, and Living End was the last team that came in. Living End is interesting, I think, to see. Uh, there have been a lot of changes to that deck over the past few sets, just with the re release of new cyclers and things like that. And Blue Moon is a pretty sweet deck, too. Uh, if you don't know, it basically uh, plays off of Blood Moon a lot. So 
really sweet. Uh, definitely a lot of variety in the deck list, so I'm happy to see that. Um, no real red flags for modern right now, I don't think. Um, but we do have a couple new decks, which I'm excited about. Again, humans and hollow one. Definitely, definitely cool. Um, so congratulations to the winners of those tournaments. Uh, if you're looking to play modern, now's a great time to get into it. But uh, again, keep in mind, it's a healthy format right now. So you're going to see a lot of different decks, which makes it a lot harder uh, to, to, to have a good showing in a tournament. So keep that in mind as you move forward. I do also want to say, and this is the last thing, card quality was finally addressed by Wizards. Uh, this is something that we've seen over the past few years. Card quality has been an issue. Warping, uh, just print quality has been terrible. Uh, inconsistencies with printing, a lot of smudging. And so finally, finally, Wizards has addressed it, uh, though they are doing it in a very uh, <laughs> interesting manner. Um, though still very positive. Uh, what they're basically saying is they're planning to move forward with a brand new sort of printing process. Uh, they've worked with their main printer in Japan. Uh, they plan to release basically step by step what they plan to do for uh, new printing and basically looking back at old printing and seeing what, it, what essentially went wrong. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, they do say already that with Dominaria there will be a new print process. Uh, including new coatings for the cards. So hopefully this is going to solve at least some of the issue, and hopefully this can only go up from here over the next few sets. Uh, but it's definitely great that they're finally addressing the issue and hopefully moving towards a solution for it. That's definitely what uh, players have been asking for for a long time. Uh, so to see them actually move forward with that is fantastic. So again, excited about that. Excited about Dominaria. It's going to be a great set. Hopefully uh, I can get my hands on a lot of it because it looks to be one of those sets that, that really, really does well. Uh, no bannings, no restrictions. Great for everything. Uh, and then, of course, deck text moving forward. If you have any suggestions, let us know in the comments section. Guys, thank you for watching uh, what has been ba basically just me rambling about stuff going on in Magic right now. Again, hopefully we're going to start doing this once a week, maybe once every other week uh, on Thursdays, just as a sort of catch up on what's going on, uh, as well as basically looking at some of the interesting news that's been going on lately. So hopefully you guys will stick around and enjoy that. If you've got any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. If you liked this video, make sure to like it, click that little thumbs up. If you disliked it, make sure to hit the little thumbs down, let us know. Uh, but again, if you want to see more content, definitely subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of new stuff coming out that hopefully you guys will enjoy. Thank you so much for watching guys, and we will see you next week.